Hey, what's up treasure hunters? So the thrift stores are finally starting to open back up, which is good news. I have been to the local Goodwill. Uh, it's really the only one that's opened around me and I haven't really found anything. I did find one piece, but really nothing to rave about quite yet. I don't even know who made it, but I have been reinvesting some of the profits that I made throughout April on some online auctions through a smaller auction house located in Cincinnati. So reinvesting profits takes away a little bit of the risk because, you know, it's just money you made from selling, you know, items that you already found at thrift stores. And it gives you a chance to put those into some other items that give you a good chance to make some really big profits. See these online auctions, they only post items that do have some value or are by listed artists. So finding value within those items can, you know, lead you to a lot bigger profits more consistently than, you know, just searching for treasures at thrift stores. The thing is not every item that you see listed is going to have enough room for you to actually make a profit on. Uh, there are collectors out there or people that want to purchase the items for you know what they are and keep them in their home for decoration or whatever it might be so the key to this is monitoring the auctions you know finding those items that do have some ability to resell to make the profits and definitely setting a limit on what you're willing to pay because once you start going over that limit you're just cutting into the potential profit that you could make on that purchase. So like I said before, I've been browsing a uh, kind of local auction house, uh, ebth.com, which stands for everything but the house. And they sell nationally, um, but you know they're based out of Cincinnati, Ohio, and they also have a satellite place in Columbus. I wanted to go through the site with you uh, at least show you my method of going through and finding value on items and going through the different items that I won, why I chose those items to bid on and, you know, why I think I can make profit off them. So hopefully you'll find this interesting and informative on making some profits through these online auctions, especially while, you know, these thrift stores are slowly opening up and there's not a whole lot you can do so far um, and haven't been able to for the last, you know, three months or whatever, going out and finding treasures of your own. So let's get into it. All right, let's start by going through and looking at how I find value in auction sites. And everything's going to depend on the auction site you're on. I like to work with kind of smaller auction houses because any of the larger ones, um, Sotheby's or Christie's or any of those are going to have a lot of really expensive items and they get tons of views and you're probably not going to find too much value to like resell immediately. I mean, if you had the money, you could make an investment in a piece of art or something and keep it for however long and resell it. I know people do that. And, you know, can make a lot of money doing that, but a lot of their items are higher end and very well-known artists and stuff. That, so you're really not going to find too much there, at least from my experience. So we're going to work with everything but the house because this is the auction house that I've been looking through. I really like the website they have. Um, I like the fact that it's really easy to use. One of the best things is if you follow an item and or if you bid on an item and are winning that item, they, they'll even send you a text message, like a push mes message saying that, you know, you were outbid on that item. So if you forget and the auction's ending soon and someone outbids you and you really wanted, you know, that piece, you can go back on and, you know, bid again and hopefully win the item. First thing I usually do is go up to the ending auctions and 
you know, each item is going to say about how long is left in the auction, um, the current bid, and if you wanted to follow that auction. They sell all different kinds of things. I usually start, you know, with art, and they have different types of art, obviously, pottery. They have a lot of paintings. Um, I've seen some sculptures on here. But, you know, I've gone through a lot of these already. But if I'm not familiar with the artist, which most of these I'm not, you know, I'll just take a look at the item details. Um, and since everything but the house is out of Ohio, out of Cincinnati, Ohio, actually, you do see a lot of Ohio artists. And just because they're not really well-known artists doesn't mean that there aren't collectors of that work out there or that, you know, you can't make you know, a couple hundred dollars or even more from buying off the auction site and then reselling on a marketplace like Etsy or Cherish or Ruby Lane or eBay or even buy, sell, trade if you wanted to go that route. So I don't know who Jay Wilford is. So I usually, if it's just, you know, Jay Wilford oil painting or landscape oil painting or anything like that is fine. It's easy if you just highlight it and then search. I usually scroll through real quick and look at some of the first results that come up here. I do see J. Wilford Arts here. So this guy's obviously still alive and making art because he has a nice updated website. So it's not entirely old and it might say that. I didn't read the summary, but then I'll look at the images. And the thing I like about doing this is because it tags products and any of these product tags when you click on it it's going to tell you what the price is so that way you're not having to search through a bunch of you know ebay results trying to find something by this guy or anything so it makes it real quick and here you can see you know this is a different website um, than everything but the house and you can see how many things come up that are selling by Jay, Wil uh, Jay Wilford. So, but this is a different site and uh, they have a price tag of 160. So, I mean, this is already at 350. I don't know exactly. Um, I mean, this is a normal size medium painting. That's another thing I always check out is the dimensions. Some of the stuff they sell on here um, and they'll note it too in the item details that it may be difficult to ship and they tell you that it'd be a good idea to pick it up because they do that for free but you know this you can easily ship back out too um and that's what i'm most concerned about is okay well if i resell it how much is it going to cost me to ship it to somebody else like if it's a 48 by you know 36 painting that's going to cost at least a couple hundred dollars to ship just to ship anywhere and you know somebody buys it in california or something could be even more it has a little bit of the details it's an untitled work um, oil on canvas and it's side in the lower right and you can click through and obviously see the details it doesn't say exactly but it does say 21st century so this is a contemporary piece and even has his uh website on the back so this wouldn't be really a good buy for me um because i don't think i'll be able to make more you know than it's currently at and there's still five hours left so that took a lot longer because i'm explaining everything as i go but i'll look through and like look at some of the different artists and stuff anything that's named and this guy obviously too has a website not very nice though and go through and just find the different things that are selling for you know the different products and stuff and sometimes you really won't find any products that outside of uh everything but the house that can be a little bit tougher um you'd have to sell more on you know if, if it's more of an unknown artist you're gonna have to sell more on the fact that you know the decorative value or um, you know what they actually painted so yeah I just go through and do that and sometimes you'll find let's see if we can go through all of these have 
different artists named, but like say this one, um, it's just seascape oil painting. So that means the auction house hasn't found who actually painted this. So it says artist unknown and it's an oil on canvas and it's signed Stevens. So what I usually do is go through and see if they have an actual photo of the signature. And here you can see it definitely says Stevens. Sometimes they'll say, you know, signed something and it might be that or it might be something a little bit different. So this was signed Stevens, obviously. And then you can go through and add, you know, search C Seascape oil painting and then sign Stevens and see if something like that shows up. So here you can see on eBay, first result, it's a Seascape. Signed Stevens, it's got to be the same artist. Um, yep, same signature. And this is on eBay for 90 bucks. It looks to be pretty small, this painting. Um, so size obviously matters and how much you're going to be able to make off it. Um, this art is only an 8x10. And this one is, again, I didn't look at the dimensions first, but it's 42 by 42 and a half by 32 and a half or 30 and a half. That's a big painting. That will be really difficult to ship. Um, since it's already selling on eBay, it's a smaller one. So maybe this big painting, you might be able to sell it for 300. There's still six hours left, you know, 20 bids. And you always have to two, since I live, you know, five hours or four hours from Cincinnati, I'm obviously not going to pick it up. So I always have to look at the shipping price and that's going to add another $63 onto whatever the winning bid is. So this wouldn't be a good selection either. Here are some of the things that I was following. Um, these I just kind of liked the way they look. I just wanted to see how high they would uh, go. Um, and some of these might have some value. I'll have to wait and see, especially this one. But, you know, it's at 199 There's still six hours left. And, you know, the last hour or two is when the bids really go crazy. I've seen stuff selling for almost nothing. And then, you know, the last couple hours come in and the bid flies up, you know, to $400 or something. So most people will wait until the end because it really doesn't matter. It's the final bid that counts. I'll follow all of these. Sometimes I will, like I, this, I did bid on it um, because I wanted to get updates and there's still two days left. And when you do bid at least on this site you put your bid in which is usually just the minimum over the current bid and then you can fill in the max bid if you want so it'll automatically bid you up so if somebody bids 75 on this it will my price the current bid will go to 75 but i'll still be winning and then whoever bid on it is going to have to bid 85 or higher and um, you can edit that these are just some of the pieces that, you know, I'm currently following and some of them, you know, have five days left. So who knows how high this was going to get. And then you can look at to some of the ended items kind of like this. I would have definitely bought this for 26 bucks, but I forgot about this auction when it was ending. So I did not follow through with this and same with this piece. Um, I did see some of his work valued between four to a thousand dollars depending on you know the size and everything else so this could have been a good buy here but again it ended with this uh metal plaque and then you'll see some of the other pieces here that ended that i was watching and some of these like i did win this buddhist type or hindu or you know type of statue or sculpture uh, made of bronze and i did sell it was larger than this this one's actually kind of small but i did sell one i found um at i think i had it in one of my first videos of my sales of 2019 i sold it for i think like 300 or 375 bucks or something and i got it at the thrift store for like five bucks but this one is older um, probably, you know, late 
19th, early 20th century. And I did sell some of these, or I did see some of these selling for, you know, $500, $600. So, you know, I would take my chance with that. And I know at least, and this only cost like 10 bucks to ship because it was smaller. And so at $150, you know, I know I probably can, I know I'll be able to get that back. But, you know, hopefully I'll be able to make, you know, at least 300 to, you know, $400 off of it. And they do a really good job shipping things out, like, you know, with packing them safely and all that. So here are some of the things that I've won so far. And all of this money spent has basically, you know, all of this was profit that I made in April. So I'm just reinvesting it into other artwork that I could possibly sell for a lot more than, you know, thrift store items. You know, if you find something that you can sell, you know, for, you know, $300 or $400, I mean, that's a pretty good find. You're not going to find too many things that can sell for that much or especially even higher than that. Doing it this way, yeah, you're going to put in more of an investment, but it's not like it's coming, you know, out of my work make that I made working or something. It's just profit that I made and I'm just reinvesting it and trying to, you know, make more off of that profit. And that's one of the ways that you can grow any kind of resale business is, you know, you start selling a few things and then instead of just taking that money out and spending it on whatever, you take that profit and now you have a lot more money to build your inventory and the items you have and you just kind of let that snowball until you have a really good collection of nice items that you can sell for a lot higher than, you know, just a couple smaller items that, you know, you just continually recycle those things. So. And this one was listed just as a coastal genre watercolor painting. And the reason why I purchased this, and I don't know why they did not list this with the artist. And this is really nicely done. Um, and it is monogrammed on the side CLS. But then it's hard to see what this does say. Campbell Lindsay Smith and then it is in a really old frame and then this card here is actually from an antique shop like the other side of the card is like a card from an antique shop and it says Campbell Lindsay Smith and 1915 and when I searched for Cam Campbell Lindsay Smith I saw you know works from him selling a whole lot more than $200 so it was definitely worth the gamble and I think shipping was like 40 bucks or something. You know, I definitely think I can get that investment back. I feel strongly I could make, you know, a decent profit off of this. And then we already talked about the figure here. Now this one I took a chance on and, you know, it's, it's from 1910, so it's really old. And this is also a watercolor. Really nicely done. I really like, you know, the reflection in this river. But and I'm I totally forget who this artist was. I'm gonna have to look that up. But it's signed ESM. So when I did my searching, and like here's an example of a work done by him. Um, it was done in 1910, and it is a watercolor. Now, the subject matter doesn't match, but he did do landscapes because I searched for that too. And it doesn't tell me the price. But if you look at how he signed this, I mean, this he signed, you know, more of his full name. But the way, like the handwriting for the E and the M on this compared to this looks really similar um, and you know the date matched up and everything so I really think that this was done by him I mean I'm not I would have to get a second opinion on that but if it was done by him 
you can see some of like, you know, just this is selling right now for 800 and this painting here is selling for 1500 and you can see, you know, the date matches up right when he would have been alive and painting. So uh, I'm not exactly sure, but it's definitely worth it to take a shot on that watercolor for 160 bucks. And it's really nicely done anyway. And again, I think I could, you know, make a profit on it either way. But, you know, I have a, I just really, you know, that's an example of, you know, finding, trying to do a little more research and finding out, you know, who the artist might be and uh, taking advantage of the fact that it, it's not listed under that artist. And, you know, you could potentially make a really nice profit off of something like that. So uh, when I get it, I'll inspect it closer and maybe get a second opinion or um, whether that's through Facebook group, um, like art identification Facebook group or identify my paintings or something like that. I'm part of a bunch of different groups like that that, you know, I regularly post things on. So we'll see when it comes. Hopefully it is by him. And then the last thing I purchased here was also 160. And this is also one that doesn't have any listed artists. But this is really nicely done old watercolor of some scales. And this actually has, it's a pair of them. So you have this first one. And then this one also, which looks like it's on, it's uh, on the back. So they're in one frame, but there's two different drawings. And I don't know if they took this out of the frame and checked. I mean, there might be a signature on the back or something, but seeing that these are original watercolors of this, like this well done and, you know, really kind of cool. So when I searched for this, I found, you know, this weight scale drawing. You know, this is done by Robert W.R. Taylor. And then when you search for Robert W.R. Taylor, you know, a lot of these kinds of technical drawings come up. And these are, you know, just prints from Fine Art America. They do a lot of different prints and stuff. But these are just reproduction prints. You know, to have both of those drawings, actual drawings and stuff of those scales, you know, those could be, well, worth well more than and again this is just a signed um you know reprint but you know it's selling for 150 bucks so i definitely think there's profit to be made with those if in fact these were done by robert robert wr taylor so those are just a couple examples of you know how to find or go through and it does take some time but i don't mind looking through things you can do it even while you're watching TV or something. Um, yeah, just go through and you can do some searching, look at different types of art and stuff. And these could be, you know, you could sell these. These would look great in a doctor's office or anybody with any kind of technical background. And they're really kind of unique. So those are the four items that I've purchased in the last couple of weeks. Mostly because, you know, I can't, I, I wanted to reinvest, you know, my profits. And also I can't really go to any thrift stores yet. Um, there's just a couple open around here. But the only thing I found was, uh, you know, it's Studio Pottery Base that I'm still trying to ID. So nothing crazy. But those are my buys. I hope I shed some light on how to make some money during, you know, this continued lockdown. And how to make money on these different auction sites. So that's all I got for you guys today. I appreciate you guys watching and tuning into the channel. I hope you found the information educational and I hope it helps you out um, finding some good items for resale. As always, if you could like and subscribe to my channel, that would really help me. I am still running my 
uh, giveaway for my first 100 subscribers, which the information is up on my website. One of those items is going to change because it was sold. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I'll, you know, pick another great item to list up there for my first 100 subscribers. Um, once I hit that number, I'm going to randomly choose three people and ship out one of the items to each of those people. And that'll be free of charge and, you know, a really good addition to you can either resell it or you can keep it for yourself. So guys, thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll be back with some new videos. So I will see you then.